a sea of dissent flooding Minsk. More than 100,000 protesters marched through the capital, calling for an end to President Alexander Lukashenko's nearly three decades long rule. This protest cannot be stopped anymore. There's no way back. The point of no return has already been crossed. The people will go to the end to defend their constitutional rights. The legal system does not function in our country. Violence rules our country. One man rules our country. The month-long protest marks the biggest challenge to Lukashenko's grip on power and what's been called Europe's last dictatorship. The opposition has refused to accept the result of last month's election, which the president says he won with 80 percent of the vote. Speaking from exile in neighboring Lithuania, his rival Svetlana Tikhanovskaya called for new elections. The country is in a state of political crisis. And the only way out of this crisis is announcing another transparent and fair election. But Lukashenko has shown no intention of relinquishing power. A visit by the Russian prime minister last week seemed only to embolden the 66-year-old strongman. He spent the past days warning his neighbors Poland, Latvia, Lithuania and Ukraine against interfering in Belarus's internal business. Rather than extending an olive branch, authorities have confronted the mostly peaceful protesters with sticks and tear gas. And the president has unleashed bands of brass knuckle security forces on men, women and children. Local rights groups say at least 250 people were detained nationwide on Sunday, adding to the thousands arrested since the protest began. Many have returned bruised and battered with horror stories of humiliation and outright torture. But the latest protests underline their determination to press ahead with their demands. Well, these demonstrations in Belarus have now gone on for four straight weekends and the number of protesters taking part is increasing too. Our correspondent Nick Connolly is in Minsk and he sent us this assessment. Neither the torrential rain nor repeated government warnings could keep people off the streets of Minsk today, coming out as they did in their hundreds of thousands against one man, Alexander Lukashenko. A month after Belarus's rigged election, and these protests just won't go away. Instead, they're getting bigger, week after week. Today, you saw people out with their friends, their pets, and even their children. And these are the very same people that Alexander Lukashenko has called rats. His government defames them as prostitutes and drug addicts. But when you speak to them, you get a sense that they've lost their fear of the government. And instead, they're laughing at it. Laughing at a government that distributes pictures of Lukashenko with an unloaded gun in full military gear in front of his own palace. But it's not as if they wouldn't have good reason to be fearful. Tonight again, plainclothes policemen arresting people seemingly at random and with impunity all across Minsk. When you talk to people about their fears, they tell you one thing over and over again. There are just too many of us. They can't put us all away.